the Leo and Danny show. Uh, for me, because I'm a thespian, nobody else really understands, I guess, like being in acting class and being immersed in that. So I guess really the top, of, like the most amazing thing you do as an actor is be on stage on Broadway. Uh, what was that like? And were there groupies? Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, are you hanging out with the elite? I always imagined it being like, so like Bell it's a bunch of... was on Broadway, are we saying? Yes, he was on okay, Broadway. I didn't yeah. know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I no said problem. at the beginning. Uh, oh, when I was three talking about different exactly. shows, but who's counting, guys? Okay. Who's counting? That's a fucking pretty sick thing. I mean, not a lot of people are on Broadway. That's just the truth, man. Um, <laughs> yes, broad. So let me just say about Broadway. So the the first show I did was a flop. Second show was was pretty good. Tommy Kale directed it. Tommy Kale directed Hamilton. Nice, dude. He's like the smartest person. Like he's one of those guys. Hamilton's one of the biggest theatrical productions of all time. You've heard of it, right? You guys filled me in on it. Yeah, I had yeah, no yeah. idea what you it was. Know? Well, he, they yeah. started playing for it for me one day. I was like, "What? Well, these are black people? <laughs> <laughs> they that they ran yeah. the government in the 1700s?" <laughs> I was real confused, but <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a whole thing behind that. But yeah, but, yeah. The, so, um, and it was a it was called Lombardi. It was about Vince Lombardi, and basically right. the birth of the NFL. Dan Laurie and Judith Light, sure, Chris yeah. Sullivan from This Is Us, and Rob mm -hmm. Riley from Dynasty, and everyone else is way more successful than me. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so it was it was like a hit because it was the same year the Packers won the Super Bowl and the Packers would all come. We performed on Lambeau Field, uh, scenes for the play. But in terms of groupies, like Broadway theater is basically like older Jewish women right. from Long Island mm. and gay dudes, mm -hmm. right? So you're not going to get groupies if you're in a play about football. <laughs> no, yeah. The way you get groupies is if you're in Cats and you're wearing a skin-tight outfit and you have yeah. a bunch of gay guys like, I'm going to fuck Rum Tum Tigger. <laughs> and then some women with cobwebs or JJ who's like, oh my God, I just grinded, got grinded on by, by Mr. Mistopheles or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> so there is no real, there is no real groupie yeah. thing, uh -huh. at least from, from my end. I'm uh -huh. sure there is. But then the day like Broadway, it's the, it's the fucking lowest of the totem pole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like no one's like, oh, I fucked a Broadway actor. Yeah. yeah. It's like you fucked a movie star. Well, you fucked a rock star. Mm -hmm. You fucked a movie star and maybe a comic who does theaters. <laughs> Yeah. A comic who does theaters, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good hierarchy there. But yeah, interesting. Is it fulfilling though? I mean, I always just like, I've done, I did a lot of theater in college, you know? And I always thought like, damn, making it a Broadway is probably like a fucking amazing thing. Like, I can't imagine how awesome that must feel. Like, is it fulfilling as an actor? Yeah, I mean, the points where where it was getting a lot of attention and there, were, and there was an energy around it and people mm -hmm. were coming and you were sitting there with a packed house. Like, there was mm -hmm. one show where the entire Miami Dolphins came to the show. It was in the round. So, which is hilarious about that. First of all, theaters are all made in like the 1910s or yeah. whatever the fuck. So the seats are like this. Yeah. So when the Dolphins came in, uh, they just, they thought it was like a movie theater. So they just literally like filled started in the talking. first. They just, no, they showed. they're black. <laughs> yeah. You fucking dick, dude. It's a multiracial team. <laughs> So they, they basically yeah, filled kicker. in. The Sorry, excluding the kicker. <laughs> excluding the kicker. That's my joke. So they filled. They basically filled in the first two or three rows. Yeah. They didn't okay. look at their. There wasn't a seat number. They, they was like, oh, let's in. go. And they just sat down. And all these like, That's oh, funny. excuse me, that, oh, never mind. Oh and my so like God. the first two rows were all the Miami Dolphins who were not supposed to be sitting there, That's but all so the funny. like nerdy theater people were like, uh -huh. okay. So when you're in that space, you see all the energy going. It's it's kind of cool. You just try to take some time to go. Okay, this is finite. It's not going to last yeah. forever. Let me yeah. just kind of like look around and breathe and say, this is kind of fucking cool. But ultimately, nice. like, you know, it was also one of the worst periods of my life. So who the fuck mm -hmm. knows? Why is that? Uh, I was going through like a terrible breakup with a woman I thought was going to marry. And mm -hmm. so there were probably about two months of that where I literally was on autopilot, where I was just like, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm saying my lines. I had no idea where the fuck I was. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. Where you couldn't even enjoy it that yeah. great time. Do you, right now, would you much rather book say a uh, co-starring role on a sitcom or on a drama versus have success on Broadway. Because I was thinking, we were talking about the hierarchy of pussy. And I think there is a hierarchy of roles where the input and the output or the optimum ratio where you can do this relatively easily and get a lot of money and recognition for it. Yeah. At the bottom of that list is probably writing a Hollywood screenplay, which takes for fucking ever. And the chances are you're going to get zero recognition and no money for it. Yeah, yeah. The top of that list is probably being a TikToker where you shake your 16 year old ass or if you're Austin, you pull out your six inch wee wee and you've got a million followers all of a sudden. Yeah. That's like the easiest input to output ratio. Yeah. Right? Would you say that booking a TV show is better than Broadway? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I used to think that when I came out of school, because I went to NYU grad school for acting, which is wow. sort of like 
NYU and Juilliard were sort of the corollaries for each yeah. other. And I was like smoking and had my collar up, my oh, turtleneck yeah. in the rain, like James Marlon Dean. Marlon Brando. Like, Man, yeah. I just want to be John Malkovich or Marlon mm-hmm. Brando and like mm-hmm. have a gravelly voice and cry and scream and <laughs> pucker my asshole. And then, and that works for a while. Yeah. And you feel good like being the guy with a Manhattan backpack and, walking around to your unpaid theater gig. Yeah, and you can always blame your failure on your artistic ideals. Oh, and artistic integrity is a great excuse yeah. for failing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was cool for a while. And then you get older, you're just like, you see all these people, quote unquote, selling out. Mm-hmm. Like people go to LA and they're on shitty sitcoms or they become like hosts or some TV talk show. You're like, that guy was an actor. That guy was a serious comic. And now he's on a talk show. And now you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why the fuck wouldn't you? Yeah, I'll do a game show. I'll do yeah. supermarket sweeps. I don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. You right. know, because ultimately having money gives you access and power to do whatever the fuck it is you want to do. Absolutely. You know? And you, I mean, there's a lot of things that I, that over the years I've come to know about you, but you know, a lot of the comedians in LA say that you're one of the best comedians not to have a Netflix special. Why do you think that is? Hold my, hold my monster energy drink. No. uh, (laughs) Well, what, I mean, whatever. I don't want to make excuses. Part, part of it is like, obviously I'm not good enough. And number two is that, um, I never. I was always a serious actor. That was always yeah. my first thing. You, you know? do. You've been in so many, so many. You have so many credits. So, yeah. comedy to me was always like the second thing, and and I love it. And then there's a point in your life where you're like, wow, I'm actually doing comedy more than I'm doing acting. Mm-hmm. But I always thought, and this is to my judgment, I always thought that acting was going to be the thing that was going to blow up my comedy career. Like if right. I got a good movie or a good TV show, then I'd be off to the races. Right. Well, when the movie doesn't really take off the way it's supposed to and the mm. you know tv show doesn't take off then you kind of go all right it's just i'm just a working class fucking comic roll up my sleeves and i and i love it and i have a good time i also haven't networked i don't i'm not hanging out at the comedy store and mm. hey man can i do this can i do you know i hate networking too man. but it's fucking so important it's very you know? important unless Something you can create do. like a cult of personality like like Danny yeah, and, and and galvanize that type of so, audience, like yeah, man, you got to fucking network and hop on some coattails. Absolutely. That's why the fuck I'm here. I'm hopping on some coattails. Yeah, man, we got to hop on some <laughs> coattails. No, seriously, I have no doubt that if we put on all just a comedy show, right, with the people in this room, including Austin and his brother, we would sell. We would we would sell a thousand tickets. I'm not even fucking around. Wait, can I? You don't Austin's, think we could sell? 